Hello friends. So today we're going to talk about all of the books I plan to read in the month of June. And I don't really have like a super specific set TBR. I know that I'm on a roll with continuing on with some sequels this year. I feel like I've been really good at starting and continuing series. I don't think I'm much of a series binger, meaning if the whole series is published, I'm probably not going to read it back to back. It just tends to hinder my enjoyment, but um, I do like to read like one per month or one every other month just to kind of keep with the series so that I'm not forgetting too much. So this month is definitely going to be continuing on with some series as well as some rereads and perhaps the start of a couple new series maybe. I, I need to mix it up between fantasy and sci-fi. I'm still preparing right now because I just remembered that there's a sequel coming out in June that I might want to pick up. Okay, ooh, it comes out the very end of June. Let's get to some that are on my physical TBR that I have to get to because there's just a couple. Let's go with the main audiobook first. So I have been rereading the Stormlight Archive in preparation for book five, which will be released later this year, I believe. I have no idea what month because I've been off the Brandon Sanderson train, but I've reread The Way of Kings for the third time. I've reread Words of Radiance for the third time. And now I have to reread Oathbringer. However, I've only read Oathbringer once. I have never reread it. There are no annotations. And I do plan to continue on with the audiobook narration for this. I've gotten really used to the audiobook narrators, really enjoying their style and enjoying the story being read to me. I feel like I'm connecting to the characters so much more this way and the descriptions of things. So this will be my second time reading this. Then later on in the year, I've never read Rhythm of War yet. So exciting times. This is my last reread in the series and I'm really looking forward to it. So I definitely want to prioritize reading this in June because I genuinely miss this world a lot already. Now, one of the first series that I would like to continue on with in the month of June is the Sun Eater. And so that is Sun Eater book two, Howling Dark by Christopher Rocchio. And this series is one that I reread book one of and I've never continued on with. Now I have heard fantastic things about book two in this series. Really enjoy the covers of these books as well. I just have heard from everyone that like specifically book two is really really good and that it just gets so much better and that book one was almost like a lot of world building and setup. So I'm so curious where the story is going to go. I really love all of the extra like additional content at the end of the book, whether it's a like dramatis personae or glossary type of thing. This is about 650 pages um, and it does take me longer to read than like, I don't know, a quick fantasy or young adult. So this one will take a hot second for me to get through, but this is like number one priority on my owned TBR shelf. Actually, there's only one more book left anyways, and that is, I'm so scared to say this, you guys. Do I even put it on this list? After seeing this book, you're going to realize why I've put some easier young adult books on this list as well. So what I would like to pick up and start in the month of June is Shadow and Claw. This is the first half of The Book of the New Sun by Jean Wolfe. So this includes... What are the two books in it? The Shadow of the Torturer and then The Claw of the Conciliator. And so I think it's about 500-ish pages. So each book must be like 250 pages. So what I'm going to tell myself is you're going to read book one of the first half. And that's only 250 pages. How hard can that be, right? Like I understand this is very difficult and dense to get through. You just have to kind of go with the flow and roll with it. So I am scared, but 250 pages, like we can do that fam. We can definitely do that. I bet you no one says fam anymore. I was trying on clothes in the fitting room today and the girls next to me, I was like, where am I? The girl's like, I'm getting that skirt for sure. That skirt eats. And they were like, it's giving. And I was like, I'm too old to say any of these things and also like I don't know how to use the cool new popular words like in the way that the young kids use them so I said fam and I bet we don't do that anymore but um I'm not scared of saying I'm 32 years old <laughs> so anyways if perhaps I'm feeling a little burnt out maybe I will only read The Shadow of the Torturer and then next month I will read Claw of the Conciliator to kind of like break it up furthermore. I'm not totally sure. I just know I would like to begin this in June. So those are all of the books that I physically own. Genuinely, I have to go book shopping again because I have no more physical books. It's so toasty in here. You can see I'm getting like heat rash. 
So let's go through something else I want to continue on. I want to read A Fire Endless by Rebecca Ross, which is Elements of Cadence number two. So I read A River Enchanted last month. I wasn't wild about it. I gave it a 3.75 out of five. I thought it was pretty okay, but had promise. Now you guys all told me that I would enjoy book two much, much more. You guys have liked book two more and book one was more of like a setup. So I'm not gonna lie. The way the book ended, I felt pretty okay with not knowing where it went. But because I have faith in you guys, I want to, it's only a duology. So like my sense of completionism will feel so satisfied. And I really enjoy Rebecca Ross's writing style. This is a series involving like elemental magic with like spirits of water and air and fire and like all different things like that. It's very vibey, very whimsical, musical, definitely involving music. And so I would like to read this book so that I can complete that duology. My sense of completionism isn't so bad that I would read a book that I don't have interest in. But like I said, because you guys assured me that I'll like book two more, that's why I'm going with this. Another one that I want to continue on with is The Ballad of Never After, which is Once Upon a Broken Heart book two by Stephanie Garber. I don't know if you guys will have seen this yet, but I finished Once Upon a Broken Heart and I really had a lovely time with it. And so I really wanna continue on with this. I need to find out like where we're going, what else is happening. I think that this is just a really strong quality young adult fantasy book. Like this young adult fantasy reminds me why I love reading young adult books. It's very whimsical and like, the, the writing feels very lyrical and pretty and the imagery is really pretty and I really like our main character actually and I like the other like one of the side main characters we don't really know if he's a love interest we don't really know if he's a good or bad guy and so I just I don't know it's really fun I really want to continue on with it so I plan to do so in the month of June oh I forgot about this one okay so another series that I want to continue on with in June is what's the series called the Ending Fire Trilogy. So I would like to read The Battle Drum by Sarah L. Arifi. Now this is a sequel to The Final Strife, which I absolutely adored. Like couldn't really even criticize that book if I wanted to because I thought it was so well done. It's not a new favorite. Like it didn't have that special, special something, that little bit of pizzazz to make it a favorite of all time for me. But like 4.5 out of 5, really strong. I loved the characters. I loved the parallels to like certain things in our world through these fantasy mythology aspects. I loved the world building. Like it was just all such a solid book and element. Like it was just so quality that I'm really dying to know where we go in book two, to be honest, because the way book one ended, I was like, okay, how am I going to wait to read book two? Another sequel that we are continuing on with is Death's End. So this is the third book in the Three Body Problem. I've yet to decide if this series has four books or three. I know for sure there are four things, but is one a novella? Do I need to read the novella? I need to do more research into it to tell you for sure at this point, but this is by Cixin Liu and translated by Ken Liu, which is interesting that book one and three were translated by Ken Liu, but not book two. So I don't know what happened there. You guys, I'm dying, like gasping for air, wondering how this book series is going to end, wondering which questions I'm going to get answers to, like how are things going to turn out, what's going to happen. My friend said that it's really philosophical or deals with like themes that she really likes. And so that makes me super happy because the reason I love this series so much is because of the themes. It's so thinky. It's so philosophical. You have to really use a lot of brain power to get through it. I see why a lot of people don't love it but both books in the series so far have been five-star reads for me. So I really hope the ending like hits a home run and I really, really want to love it. So that's one that will be wrapping up a series as well from my understanding. So a couple of other things. I think I only have one young adult on this list so far. So I'd like to add another and right now, I really need to order Song of the Six Realms by Judy Eilin. So she wrote the Poison Tea series or whatnot that I enjoyed and I can't wait to try this one. So I, I believe I'm doing really bad. I haven't given any synopses for these at all. I believe this deals with like Princes of Hell or something like that. It's a dreamy gothic romance worthy of the heavens. I don't wanna read this whole synopsis. I feel like it's too long. But we're dealing with a young musician 
No past and no future orphaned at a young age. Her uncle took her in and arranged for an apprenticeship at one of the most esteemed entertainment houses in the kingdom. She doesn't remember much before entering there. Her uncle suddenly killed and that was her last connection to life outside an indenture contract. No family, no patron. She's facing the possibility of a lifetime of servitude, playing the kin for nobles that praise her talent with one breath and sneer at her lowly social status with the next. One night, and she is unexpectedly called to the garden to put on a private performance for the enigmatic Duke Meng. And so he has an offer, serve as a musician in residence at his manor for one year, and he'll set her free of her indenture. I don't know where, I mean, I see demonic beasts and celestial realms in here, but I don't know where I got like the demon prince thing. But either way, like this is just one that I thought could kind of break up the density of the books this month and one that I really want to get to. Now, how many books are we at? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight. Okay, we're, we're only gonna add one more actually. And that's a fantasy book. It is an epic fantasy, um, adult fantasy. That is The Dragonbone Chair by Tad Williams. I sold this book to a used bookstore for like probably $3 and I have to reorder it again for $16, which is really annoying. I enjoyed it, but I thought I would never get back to it. And that's when I got really burnt out on adult fantasy. And so I was like, or like epic adult fantasy. And I was like, this, this is old. Like you're not really into old. And then I got burnt out on new and now I should learn like, you know, things are going to come and go in waves. So I think this is a trilogy. And then I believe that Tad Williams is still writing in this world. Maybe I'm not totally a hundred percent sure, but you guys recommend this to me all the time. It's already on my radar. It's, it's already something that I would really like to get back to because I've read I don't know, 20 to 50% of it, something like that. And I really enjoyed what I was reading at the time. I think something else had just like caught my attention and I dropped it for something else. And so that's why I picked up whatever else and put this aside and never got back to it. I generally don't do that anymore because this is what happens and then you never finish it. But I'm looking forward to having some like high fantasy, um, like epic fantasy in the mix because I feel like there's a lot of sci-fi in combination with some young adults. So I really feel like I have a good mixture this doesn't really leave any like incidentals for new things coming out. I think what I've decided is I'm not going to read like new releases usually in the month that they come out in. I'll probably wait till the following month. And then I do have some room for audiobook variables if things come through for the library or if I want to go with another reread, something like that, or like a reread to get me caught up on a series where a new sequel's coming out in. So that's why I only have the one audiobook, which is Oathbringer, and then we'll just kind of play it by ear and go from there. So those are all the books I plan to read in the month of June. As of now, I would love to hear your thoughts if you've read these books and tell me what you guys are reading in the month of June. I'd love to hear. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you next time. I've been thinking.